So in this in this chapter we will discuss about the types of waves that study that is the sound waves. The sound waves are the those waves which we can hear. And then they they pass from one medium to another medium or from one ear to another ear in, in case the air the medium in between them is air. So sound waves we are going to Sound waves, uh, like other waves, like other waves, sound is also produced by vibrating, uh, vibrating bodies. Due to vibration of the bodies, the air around them also vibrates, and the air vibration produces sensation of sound in our ears. For example, so sound is also the kind of waves. So it it is also produced when we have the medium. And the medium in this case is air. So what happens if we take the example of guitar? Sound is produced due to the vibration of its strings. So there are there are some strings over here. When we pull the push the strings with our hand, the sound will produce and it will pass through the air and reach it over here. This uh, this is this type of air is called sound waves, right? So sound waves. Remember this sound wave always requires some medium to travel. 
So in this case, sound is required medium. Our voice results from the vibration of our vocal cord, human heart beats, and vibration of other organs like lungs also produce sounds waves. So lungs, uh, all the all the organs in our body like uh, lungs, heart, they also produce the wave sound. So how the how the doctor use uh, to uh, how the, the doctor detect the sound by using the stethoscope. Stethoscope is an instrument uh, where they can uh, hear the sound of the heart. In, in this case, uh, a doctor is checking the heartbeat of the small child. What happened? He put some uh, the prongs of the stethoscope in their ears, and and the other end of the stethoscope is they put on the heart of the uh, patient. What happened after some time? Because the the lungs, the heart, they also produce the waves or sound waves. So uh, the the heart we produce from the patient, they can be cleared by the doctor. This is also an example of the sound waves. And so we will discuss this uh, this uh, sound waves by vibrating body with the help of some uh, with the help of <coughs> example. What happened in this case? Uh, there are the tuning fork. You might have seen the tuning fork in the laboratories. What happened? They also produce the sound wave. When the tuning fork, then these are called the prongs. This, this one and this one is called the prongs. When the prongs of the tuning forks are hammered on the rubber hammer, are strike on the rubber hammer, what happened? Uh, strike on the rubber hammer. Strikes strike on the rubber hammer. So what happens? They produce the sounds. They produce the sound. If you take this prong near to your ears, you can hear the sound of the uh, fork. So we did this one. Activity 11.1. Sound is produced by a vibrating body. In school laboratory, we use a device called tuning fork to produce a particular sound. If we strike the tuning fork against rubber hammer, this is rubber hammer, right? Double hammer, the tuning fork will begin to vibrate. It will begin to vibrate about its main position. We can hear the sound produced by the tuning fork by bringing it near our ears. If we strike it, uh, strike the prongs of the tuning fork, what will happen is the vibration will create. And if we take this uh, tuning fork near to our ears, we can hear the sound of the tuning fork. We can also begin the vibration of the slightly touching. Uh, another another experiment we will be able to do now in shortly. Uh, this is one of the example of the sound produced. Then the this is the tuning forks and this is the prongs of the tuning fork. When we strike these prongs on the rubber hammer, they will produce the sound wave. So vibration will be produced if we take this uh, tuning fork near over ears. What will happen? We can hear the sound of the tuning fork. We can also uh, we can also take this tuning fork if we strike uh, the tuning fork on the rubber hammer and bring it to the uh, bring it to the small fork which we have already done this experiment in ninth class. So there is a small fork attached. There is a small fork attached on the uh, on the string. What will happen if we strike the tuning fork? And bring it to the ball. Um, the ball will move in this direction. The ball, ball, the ball, small ball. And this is the tennis ball, right? The operative table tennis ball is attached uh, in one end. The other end of the table tennis uh, is attached in the string. The other end of the string is attached in the support. And this is the one end. One end, the ball, small ball is attached, and the other end is supported with the uh, with the hook. What will happen? We uh, bring the tuning fork near to the uh, table tennis ball. What will happen? So it will move due to the vibration of the tuning fork. It will move the ball in this direction. In this direction. So we can. Uh, it, this will prove that uh, the vibration can also uh, vibrate the body. So if they can transfer the energy. So sound is energy. They can also uh, transfer the energy from this point to this point. That's why. The ball is moving from.
from this point to this point. Uh, another example which we just study now, if we dip the vibrating tuning fork, if we dip the same tuning fork in the water, there's a small uh, small amount of water in a in a cup. What will happen if we strike the tuning fork and the vibration will produce? And if we dip this tuning fork into the water, you will see the splash. You will see the splash. Of, uh, the water will. Uh, now, if you take the vibrating tuning fork into a glass of water, we will see a splash. Water does make the water splash. So, to due to the vibration of the tuning forks, uh, the splash will occur. The water will evaporate. The water will fly fly over. So, in this case, it, it, it will produce that the vibration produced by the tuning fork will create the splash, or it will move the ball from one place to another place. So the, the three examples we discussed, the tuning forks will produce the uh, vibrations in the tuning forks and the vibrations have the energy. So they transfer the energy from one place to another place. As you can see, the ball is small ball, the table tennis ball is moving uh, due to the vibrations from one place to another. Similarly, the tuning fork uh, in the when we dig the tuning fork or dip the tuning fork in the in the water, the splash will happen. Now I move towards the sound required to begin video for its propagation. Propagation means movement. Uh, so sound required material medium. So medium, I I'm, I'm going to clear you what is medium. So if we if when we talk friends talk to each other what happened they they produce a vibration in the air so, so from one place the one one will speak another will hear so how the how the sound will travel from one place to another uh, because that in between two two friends there is the medium occur which is air uh, that's why the reason the sound comes from one ear to another because the air is present. Unlike light waves, uh, which are electromagnetic in nature, uh, when we studied the ch chapter number 10, we studied the mechanical waves and the electromagnetic waves. The mechanical waves are those waves which require medium, medium for their uh, propagation. Like sound waves uh, require the medium for their propagation. But in case of the electromagnetic waves, like X rays, heat rays, these do not require any medium. They can pass through any medium. So they don't require any particular medium for their movement or their propagations. So he is talking about the electromagnetic wave. So light waves is an, is an example of the electromagnetic wave because light doesn't require any medium for their travel, for their movement. If they can pass through any medium. Uh, if the air is there, the medium is air, it can pass through if it has a Vacuum. It can vacuum means there is no air. If there is no air, it can also pass through. Which means light wave is an is an electromagnetic nature. It does not require any medium. Vacuum means there is no air. But but on the other hand, if we talk about the sound waves, which is the type of mechanical waves, as we discussed in the chapter number ten, when we discussed the mechanical waves. Mechanical waves are those waves which require some medium for their propagation, which requires some medium for their travel. So in this case, when uh, when I take the good example of the two friends, so A is that A is the medium. So our our voice comes to other person's ears through the propagation of air because then the air medium is travel. Okay, air is present between us. If there is no air, we cannot hear the voice of each other. So we will. I am going to explain you uh, this topic with the help of uh, with, the, with the help of bell jar operators. Bell jar operators is basically consists of a bell, and and it is also attached to the power supply. It has small uh, coils over here on this side. This is the coil, and this is also the coil. So this is the electric bell. You can see this figure in your 10th class textbooks. And figure 11.5 and talking about bell jar operators. So the bottom, the bottom one is the vacuum pump, 
vacuum the purpose of the vacuum pump is to uh, is to eliminate all the air present is is to eliminate all the air present is to eliminate all the air present in the bell jar so this is a vacuum vacuum pump it eliminates it evacuates it clear all the air inside the bell bell jar right so what happened if i take the if i if i take this bell jar operator if uh, if there is an air present in the bell jar operators if there is an air present in the bell jar operators what will happen uh, we can hear the sound produced by the electric bell but what will happen if we move all the air present in the bell jar operators with the help of vacuum pump and there will be no air and there will be no air we cannot hear the uh, sound of or voice of the uh, electric bell so again I'm going to read this for you. An electric bell is suspended in the bell jar with the help of two wires connected to a power supply. This is power supply. So two wires are connected, one over here, the other is over here. So two wires are connected, this is called a power supply. But switching on the power supply, if we take a power supply over here, so what will happen? Electric bell will begin to ring. It will start vibrating. Or it will produce the sound but we can hear the sound of the bell now start for pumping out air from the jar by means of a vacuum pump but if we what will happen if i if i remove all the air present in this bell jar operators what will happen is when there will be no air we cannot hear the uh, bell ring. the sound The sound of the bell starts becoming more and more feeble, feeble and eventually dies out. If feeble means uh, if there is no air present, eventually, when there is no air present, the, eventually the ring of the uh, electric bell will be uh, dies out. It will no, there will be no, we cannot hear the uh, sound of the bell. Although the bell is still ringing, when we put the air back into the jar, what will happen if we put the air into back into the bell jar operators? We can hear the sound of the electric bell very easily. They, from this experiment, it is proved that the sound requires some uh, material medium for their propagation. And the material medium in this case is air. But as long as the air is present in the bell jar operators, we can hear the ringing of the bell but when we vacuum out or when we clear out and when we remove all the air present in the bell operators what will happen the we can the bell is still ringing but we cannot hear the um, ring of the electric bell so this from this experiment it's proved that uh, the the sound requires some medium for their propagation after doing this, after doing all these experiments, uh, now we are going to discuss what kind of sound wave is. It is a longitudinal nature. It is a longitudinal nature. Sound is actually the longitudinal nature. We have discussed this longitudinal wave and transfer waves, but uh, sound wave is of longitudinal nature. If you don't know uh, about the longitudinal and transfer waves, we go back to the chapter number 10. Or you can also my YouTube channel to listen the longitudinal nature, what is longitudinal nature and uh, transfer waves, what is the longitudinal uh, waves or transfer waves. But uh, the sound wave is of longitudinal nature. What does this mean? Longitudinal nature means propagation of sound waves produced by breaking the tuning fork can be understood and should have looked into the tuning fork. Uh, this is before striking. I haven't stri striped. Out this tuning fork with the rubber hand. This is the this is its rest position. This is its main position. So this is our A point A position. This point is four, which is called the main position. We call the tuning fork is at rest. And this this point B B means this is the B point. So A point O A point O point and then G point. So this.
this is this is the first condition when I haven't struck uh, the heli fork on the rubber handle. Next, what will happen? That this is the air molecules. The position of the air molecules because I haven't struck uh, the heli fork with the rubber handle. The, there is no movement. There is no uh, disturbance in the air particles. So air particles are uniform. But what will happen if I strike the tuning fork with the rubber hammer? It, it will it will produce a vibration, and these vibrations will transfer from uh, transfer their energy to the air molecules. So the uh, Air molecules near close to the vibrations, they are compressed, and this is called the compression. Compression, and this is air pressure. So the I, I have already told you compression and air pressure. Compression means the molecules are compressed, air molecules are compressed, and air fraction means the molecules are not compressed. When I strike the uniform on the rubber hammer, what will happen? They will the vibration of the uniform. Tuning fork will transfer their energy to the air molecule. Then the molecules near the air, uh, vibration are compressed. They are, you can see, they are compressed and they, they are the rear fraction. There is a compression and the rear fraction. So they are transferring their energy to the adjacent uh, molecules of the hairs. So they are passing their energy to the other molecules of the hairs. So what will happen after some time? So the position of the tuning fork will be uh, zero. Mean position. This is the mean position now. Uh, due to the vibration, they are moving towards right hand side. All the compression uh, will happen. But what will happen when the tuning fork, the tuning fork will come back to A position and will move towards left. The rear fraction, uh, they will pass in due to the other air molecules and the compression will occur at, at, uh, to the next adjacent layer. So there will be the rear fraction, there will be the rear fraction of this and the compression will be on this. So the, it will so it produce that, uh, that the sound wave is a type of longitudinal waves. So I read this down. Uh, for propagation of a sound waves Propagation of a sound wave. Propagation of sound waves produced by a vibrating tuning fork can be understood in short level. Before the vibration of tuning fork, density of air molecules on the right side is uniform. So you can see in A, A the density of the air molecules are uniform. So you can They are uniform. So when when the right prong of the tuning fork moves from mean position O to position B, O to O to B on this right hand side, it exerts some pressure on the adjacent layers of the air molecules and produces a compression. So you can see this is a compression. So similarly, this compressed this compressed air layer in turn compression the layers next to it and so on. A moment later, the prong begins to move from B towards A. Now the pressure in the adjacent layer increases and the air fraction is produced. The air fraction is transferred to the air layer to the next to it and so on. As the uniform moves back and forth, as the uniform moves back and forth, there is a uniform rapidly a series of compression and air fraction are created in the air. In this way, sound wave propagates in the air. So the direction of propagation of sound wave is all along the direction of the oscillating air molecule. This shows the longitudinal nature of the sound wave. Distance between two consecutive compression and air fraction is the wavelength of sound wave. So we have discussed uh, the wavelength, the amplitude, uh, Compression, rear fraction, these four topics we have discussed in chapter number 10. I just gave you the idea about 
and how that the sound will be better. Now I'm going to the whole topic for you. Students, what we studied today, uh, class 10, subject physics, and chapter number 11, we started. And we basically covered 20, 21, and 22. We studied uh, sound, and that we discussed about sound. Uh, we, we studied sound waves, how sound waves produce, sound waves produce with the guitar, how the sound waves produce with the guitar, and how the uh, waves come to our ears so we can hear the uh, voice of our guitar. So then we discussed about uh, the tuning fork, how the tuning fork vibrates, and how it produces the sound waves. When the tuning fork is fired over the rubber hammer, it produces vibration and uh, if we do this meaning for near to our ear, it produces a vibration. So next with the vibrated meaning for when being near to the uh, small tennis ball, the tennis ball also moves on the right on the left direction. So this is because the energy uh, sound energy uh, it produces the uh, it produces the motion of the ball. Next we study if we take a vibrator tuning fork and uh, dip into the water, the stash will uh, the, Then we discuss sound requires some material medium, so sound requires medium for the propagation. In this case, air is the medium. So we discuss from bell, bell jar filters. Bell jar filters consist of a bell and it consists of bell jar filters consist of a bell as long as in, in this chamber, the, we can hear the sound of the uh, bell. But when we remove all the air to the vacuum pump, what we have done, we can then still remove, but we cannot hear the sound. So, uh, uh, sound waves are the longitudinal natures. So, if you don't have, uh, don't have any idea about longitudinal nature, we go back to chapter number 10 and, and watch my. Uh, uh, for propagation, it is of longitudinal means with the new position. There is no air because we haven't strike, strike the tuning fork. But when we strike the tuning fork, compression and compression will happen. So when we get to come back to the new position, the there is the air that is in the compression. So so then the compression and air between the compression and air section will happen. I hope students uh, you understand this topic. If you have any questions regarding this topic, you can feel free to 